Hey guys, today we are going to talk about what happens to your cards after rotation. Now, a lot of you will say, hey, I'm smart. I'm going to sell my cards 60 or 90 days from rotation, which would be coming soon. That's not going to work because if you sell your cards too early, what are you going to take to your FNM? You would be defeating the whole purpose of having those cards, which is to play them. Rotation affects most people who are actually interested in playing tier 1 decks in standard. So that the concept where people say, oh, you should have expected that card to be banned. Oh, you should have known that card would be banned. Well, these cards are not banned for a very long time. Emiko was not banned until recently, as was Smuggler's Copter and Feldon Guardian. So... Yes, although you might expect the card to be banned, you still have to play the card if you want to win. That's just unfortunately how magic is. You cannot be like, oh, okay, I'm not going to play Smuggler's Copters at all because I know it's going to be banned one day. Even if you had known that, you would have been losing FNM all the time to Smuggler's Copter, which is a tier one deck or a tier 1 card being played in all of the tier 1 decks. So, uh, let's talk about Dragons of Tarkir. We have Kolagon's Command at 14, Collected Company at 13, Narsa at 11, and that's it. The next card is Ataka's Command, and then we have some Dragon Lords, and then Sarkhan Unbroken. So, when something rotates out, Interestingly enough, Narset rotated out around 5 or $6, and she has been steadily climbing ever since. Really, really good EDH card. Somewhat playable in modern kind. Not really playable in Legacy, given the fact that there is a JST Mind Scope there, but that's an interesting one. Coco sees a lot of play. That card is also over $10, and I really don't see it being under $10 until a reprint and Kolagon's Command as the number one card. But as you can see, everything else, including Death Miss Raptor, which at one time was a $20, $25 card, is nowhere to be seen. Now, in Cons of Tarkir, we have the Polluted Delta, Bloodstained Mirror, Wood of the Foothills, Flooded Strand, Windswept Heath, and then Nada. So all of those really nice cards that you had in your decks that were non-fetch lands are now pretty much worthless. That is what rotation is. At least in Conjuntar Care, we have five cards over $10 at non-mythic. That's the exception, right? Most lands are not going to be over $10. If you take a look at the current lands we have in standard, they're not very good. Like, oh, cycling dual lands, nice. No, that's not going to be over $10. It's not even going to be over like 4 or $5. It's just not going to happen. So in outside the fetch lands in Karns of Tarkir, you don't have very much value. The next most expensive card is Sorin at $4 and Clever Impersonator at, at actually $4. So when rotation happens... You can expect all those fancy cards to go plummet down into oblivion. And this is the curse of rotation, if you will. You are given two choices. Play the cards or don't play the cards. If you do not play the cards, then you will have a worse deck than if you had the cards. Now, if you do play the cards, you will eventually get hit by rotation. And rotation is going to take the, your entire standard collection, divided by 10, and there you go. That is your new net worth. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I can, you know, trade in the fetch lands. I can do this. It's not like, a, okay, maybe in the past where people didn't have internet, like you could have got away with that. But today people have smartphones. Today people know ro when rotation is. And if you survived one or more rotations, you have a very clear understanding of what's happening. And you're not going to trade away your fetch lands for standard stuff. Here is an interesting one. Fate Reforged. 
Let me explain Ugin's price, and this is a good story. Ugin is a card that Dragon Planeswalker, that it can be played in every single deck. Every single ED8 deck can play one of him, and he's good in every single deck because he is colorless. Now, one of the unique things about him and why he's so expensive, he sees some play in modern, a tad of play in modern, but the main reason is supply is very low. Fate Reforged was not a good set. It was not a good set when it was in standard. It was not a powerful set. When you look at Monastery Mentor, that was not a standard card. That was always a legacy card. And then what else you got? I mean, take a look at this list. Like, Honestly, the what's it look like? The sixth most expensive card, Brutal Horde Chief, is as, as a mythic is ninety five cents. That's all that needs to set, be said about this particular set. Very very top heavy, and so far Grandmaster did see some play, but not that much. And, and Tassiger was recently reprinted. Otherwise, he would be slightly more, but not that much more. So when you have a set like Fate Reforged or a more recent set, I guess, an older set, Dark Ascension, where it is the a set that no one really cares about, not pe- many people are hyped. It's just this random set in the middle of two really good sets. You will have an Ugin. And that's how finance works. All right, moving on to Magic Origins. So moving back to Magic Origins, you have Jason 24 Lily at 9, Nissa at 7, Archive at 5, Hangaback Walker at 4.5, Kifios at 4, Archangel Tiefs, Tifes at 4. We have a lot more balance here, but let me say this. Fat packs, I've never seen fat packs of any set be as cheap as they are Magic Origins. They're about $24 right now, and $24 of a fat pack is very intriguing because it comes close to the all-time low of $20 in Dragon Maze. But Dragon Maze at $20 is no longer as intriguing because the Voice of Resurgence is like $12 now, no longer a $40 card. So here you have Mythic, 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 Hang a Back Walker 452, Mythic, Mythic. The expected value of a set of like this is very bad because all your value is at the Mythics. And the Jace, the Lily, the Nessa, the Kifios. Chandra has always kind of taken beating. I've always loved Chandra, but her Planeswalkers are always like not great. Even the Chandra Torch of Defiance. We will see what that price actually ends up after rotation. This is an interesting set. I mean, it's Mythic heavy and it is the last Origin set. Some people will tell you because it's the last Origin set, It's going to be really valuable, but the actual finances do not point that way because you can get a fat pack for $24. You can get a booster box for $75. And this is not like a special price I'm giving. This is the online retail, including free shipping when you order over $200. Like this is not like I do get like if I order $1,000 of stuff, then I get a uh, 2.5 or 5% off coupon in addition to like other stuff, but I don't get the free stuff. But anyway, next on to Journey into Nyx, Ajani 14, Eldilon of Great Rebels. This is one that people promoted and hyped, and they said, oh, this is the next great red card. This will be a $40 Goblin Guide in no time. Um, no. And then you have God of, God of Passage, the Kyranos, which is also one that people say were really good. Krufix, I mean... That was the worst of the gods, and it's the same price as Kyranos, what people said was really good. And you have Mana Confluence and God Send. So, even cards that may seem like they will be staples, like Edulon of the Great Revel, which are staples for Uvs and any red deck that can play it, they may take a long time. We are not in the golden age of MTG Finance. We are at the, holy crap, they reprinted Tamagoy for like the 18th time and that finally it's like over, it's less than $90. We are at the point where you can print Eternal Masters twice, then print Modern Masters, then announce Iconic Masters. 
And this whole time you have Command Anthology, Plane Chase Anthology, Dual Deck Anthology. Like n nothing new is being generated. Like all, I mean, you still have your regular sets like Amaket, Our Devastation, but nothing new secondary product wise is being generated. It's just reprints of stuff. Oh, Anthology, cool. Oh, Masters, awesome. Oh, Commander Decks, cool. Mm, Commander decks have new cards, but it's let's not let's be honest here. Commander decks mostly are reprints, right? The design. If if you're a company and you can sell more Magic cards by just printing stuff people want, or you have and hiring less people, and hiring a team that doesn't really need to be great because they don't have to be creative. They're not designing new stuff. They're not playtesting new stuff. These are known items with known power levels then why would you do anything else? All right, Born of the Gods really fast. There's no card over $10. Now back to this story. Let's imagine you are, I use the same example. It's all about the profit margins and the economics. So if you are a counterfeiter and you're sitting in your dorm in China and you're like, hmm, what should I counterfeit today? Should I counterfeit a Eternal Masters Force of Will, which now needs a sticker? Or should I counterfeit a regular Force of Will, which I can sell easier and I don't need to go through the option of getting stickers? The same can be said of Wizards of the Coast. Hmm, I can come up with a new set or I can just do a set of 100% reprints. Okay, let's do the reprint set. And, okay, so now we get to this set the soldier token that's don't don't pay attention to that that's just a weird oh by the way does anyone have the soldier token i don't have any of them uh, it doesn't look that great it's like this random dude but uh anyway thought sees 17 dollars. finally it's like over 15 which is took forever and then you have god of the fords elspeth sun's champion which is one that you gotta keep your eyes on that's one that I think is really interesting because typically when a Planeswalker gets printed in a dual deck, it has no chance of recovering to over $10 for a long time. Like, um, what was that one? Tezzeret, I want to say. Tezzeret, Elspeth. But this one's interesting because it's trending very differently from Jace AOT or Vraska. Vraska was always bad. But most... Uh, Soren, Lord of Innistrad. Oh, and most of these dual deck planeswalkers do not do as well as Elspeth in the same given amount of time. So overall, you have a situation where things are not great. Like the health of... If you have a lot of standard cards, you should never have more than four of any standard card. Unless it's for a quick speculation. If you're going to hold on to standard cards long term, that's like the worst move you could ever do. You need to get rid of standard cards as soon as you can, minus the one deck that you will play. I know a lot of people want to play like four decks or five decks. You are going to get slaughtered during rotation. You need to play one or two decks, and that's it. And maybe you exchange the decks, but you trade the one or two decks for one or two more standard decks. And that's okay, because that's how you should do it. But you should not trade your modern cards into standard cards. You should not trade your legacy cards into modern cards. You should never trade your EDH cards to any of these free cards. EDH can encompass all of them, obviously, but like if there are some EDH staples where you think, oh, huh, this is a really hard card to get, like Kalia. I never see Kalia. Like if I saw a Kalia in Trade Binder, I would snap trade for it. I would over trade for it because I want I want a collection of Kalias. And thankfully, we now have Command and Anthology, which I just said was bad. But anyway... That's it. Leave me a comment below with your horror story of rotation. Bye, guys.